Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma, Michael is the author of Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, the forgiveness doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. And the truth that is Hi, and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio. Today's the last day of August. Me and Tom flies, and it's day 94 of our Memorial Day celebration. Uh, our call in number is 646 200 4169. And for those of you that are just coming on, we're a little late getting started, but thanks for hanging in there with us. Michael, are you there? I certainly am. I'm and here Kim and David are both with us. Oh, awesome. I'm here in sunny Naperville, Illinois. Good morning, Tim, or good afternoon, Tim. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon. How are you, gentlemen? I'm doing well. I don't hear David yet. No, I don't hear his voice either. Well, things are going uh, very well here in uh, Crystal Lake. And we're excited that you just announced a whole series of classes there in Naperville, and I've just been busy sending out the flyers to people. Awesome. Yeah, it ought to be a great week. This is uh, going to be a really full series. We're going to do eight days in a row starting Saturday, and uh, we're going to be videotaping uh, a couple of the workshops. So we'll have some new videos, a new why video. We're going to plan to do a four-hour uh, why is this happening to me again video on Saturday. So, uh, so we're actually going to go from 1 to 5.30, which will give us half an hour intermission there. So that will be exciting, and we'll have a new Course in Miracles video as of Monday night. So lots of things happening. So the support group, uh, Tim, how did the uh, support group go, go last night? Uh, very well. We had uh, several new people, a uh, total of 13, and... Um, a big chunk of time was spent discussing all of the processing and shifts and insights that people got by attending a series of workshops one right after the other. Um, the way we're doing it in the Mind Shifter group is it takes us two weeks to get through one of your lectures. And so for people who were used to that schedule of material to come and see four or five lectures within a week, and to have the the live energy of that group um, was very, very powerful. So there was a lot of discussion about that, and people were thrilled, and several there were talking about wanting to, to go down to Naperville if if you got your session scheduled as you did. So I was busy this morning sending off emails to those people and encouraging them to send to their friends, and hopefully we'll get equally good turnout down in Naperville. Fabulous. Well, one young lady that uh, was at, this, at the uh, support group last night uh, had, has called me already this morning. I guess she had heard, I don't know from you, but uh, had, had heard that things were happening for next week, and uh, she had um, she had come the night before last to the, the short, you know, we did about a two-hour wise this I mean, again workshop, and uh, she had a particular issue that she was working on, and I guess it... Uh, Really created a, a major breakthrough for her to to uh, to do that worksheet and to uh, to start to see a couple of situations in her life a little differently. So it's a it's definitely a rewarding thing to be able to uh, to share the especially the forgiveness tool with folks. But uh, then the uh, the energetic shifts that take place over a period of of days um, when one is in that environment is pretty awesome. 
Yeah, it's it's very powerful. And um that that person you were talking about was sharing with us in the group last night none of the details, but just that she was very grateful to have that direct help from you on that worksheet because it was a small group the night before last. And um so I encouraged her to go uh, because you're going to be doing this, the why again, and several other topics that she hasn't been exposed to yet. So, I also got uh, word today from the some people who were hopefully going to start a support group at the church we were dealing with last week in Cary, and uh, sending her the flyers and having a conversation with her about the format for the group. So, apparently that is going to happen, and. Um, a week from Sunday, they're going to have their first meeting. And, uh, and well, that's fabulous. A mind shifter support group there as well. Cool. And uh, the uh, it was interesting last uh, Saturday when we were doing the mind shifters and still point breathing up in Cary, unbeknownst to us, the folks at the it's called the Ruha Center uh, in, here in Naperville. Uh, we're doing a Why Is This Happening to Me Again workshop on video. They had about a dozen people there, and it's actually a center that I had spoken at when it was just starting up about three years ago here in Naperville, and they've been doing ongoing work with the uh, the Why tools, so uh, we'll have to get them listed as a support group and uh, and maybe see if we can keep everybody linked in the, in the circle because uh, – they are really committed, and they have an absolutely beautiful center. So anybody that's in the Chicago area will be at a place called the Ruha Center. It's uh, just north of Ogden on Washington Boulevard, in between Washington, pardon me, in between Ogden and um, I-88, just uh, west of Naperville. So anybody that's in this territory, uh, we're going to start on uh, Saturday afternoon at one o'clock. 1 to 5.30, why is this happening to me again? So it will be an extended why is this happening to me again workshop. And then on Sunday we're going to do an extended communication. Did you hear what I think I said? And I'm, I'm hoping that we'll have somebody who will be uh, there who will be willing to do a, uh, a sample communication process, and we're actually going to get that on video as well. And uh, then Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday we'll be doing 7 to 9.30 workshops, and then... Uh, Sunday mind shifters and still point breathing. Breathing. So, so we've got lots on the go, and then I'll actually be uh, kind of uh, the way that uh, that we got here before we started the series up in uh, Cary. You know, we finished our intensive on um, Saturday morning, got in the van at 11 o'clock, and uh, was speaking here on Sunday. Well, uh, Jeannie flies back into uh, Springfield on Sunday, so we'll finish Saturday. I'll hop in the van and get back on down to Springfield and pick up Jeannie to uh, to head to Heartland to uh, prepare for our uh, intuitive development intensive. So anybody that's ready to take their work to still another level, uh, doing a live food dietary program, which is uh, we have this awesome food. And then uh, and Jeannie actually did the food for the last intensives at Heartland and did this fabulous job. People were just so amazed and impressed and and uh, loved it, and so we'll be doing that live food program again in uh, September the 16th through the 24th, so that's just 16 days away, 17 days away, we'll start that uh, intuitive development. In that workshop, we'll do uh, uh, Why Is This Happening to Me Again, and uh, of course, uh, Mind Shifters and Still Point Breathing, and then it's a practicum on intuition, getting having access directly to whatever's actually happening in the world rather than coming through the body's mind to get information. So that will be our, our project uh, the 16th through the 24th for, any, for anybody that wants to come and join us at Heartland. So there's a lot happening. And uh, Jeannie, uh, do we have any callers or anything in the chat room to be aware of? There's nothing yet, and I'll be running back and forth. Actually, Ryan's way up on the ladder near the top of the condo, so I'm kind of spotting him here. So I'll be running in and out, but uh, there's nobody on there right now. Okay. And maybe uh, uh, Tim could uh, keep an eye on the uh, the chat room. If, if you're on the chat room, Tim, and that way you can certainly you know, be focused a little more on Ryan. You definitely want to keep him safe. He's up on the ladder with a 
a uh, pressure hose doing the uh, washing of the building. <laughs> yeah, I can watch the chat room. Right now it's just uh, Jeannie and I in there and, and a guest, so no comment uh, bad. Fabulous. Well, welcome, guest. We're glad you're here. Our call-in number, 646-200-4169. And this is day, I think Jeannie said, 94 of uh, of our celebration of Memorial Day. And we are going to celebrate Memorial Day every day until war ends on planet Earth, which, of course, most people would say, well, that's an impossibility. But actually, it's not an impossibility. If we could get enough people... We just say, today, I'm going to be responsible for one place in my life where I have some form of hostility or fear, and I'm going to forgive that. I'm going to remove that from my mind. The cause of what I would offer is hostility and fear, which leads us to dissociate from our own traumas, which leads us to blame everybody else. And so whether they're interpersonal, verbal, emotional wars, or whether it's battles with guns and bombs, doesn't matter. It's all the same game. And if we could just get those who are holding on to their hostility and fear and pretending that everybody else is to, to blame. And, of course, the uh, the mini war is I'm, I'm out of here, I'm leaving, I'm separating, I'm not having anything to do with you. The maxi war is I'm going to kill you. And it's exactly the same principle. And uh, so there was a, a man 2,000 years ago that said, you'll come to the point if you do your own work where you will love those who hate you, do good to those who despitefully use you. And if you can't be the space of love in the presence of someone else's behavior, then you have work to do. And so here we are. Welcome to uh, to a human life. We all have our work to do because, of course, we all live on top of a thousand generations of, uh, of pain and stress and trauma. And that seems to be the, uh, the condition of the world here on planet Earth today. And it's just time for that to shift and change. And that's what we're here to support everybody in doing. So on uh, our our show yesterday, we were talking about uh, the idea of love of truth and how if we are in blockage of truth, then an error comes up in our mind. We see a picture that shows us that somebody else is the problem in our lives. And, of course, you'll notice if you've been through a particular painful reality, 87 different times with 42 different people, you're the only one that was there every time. Nobody else is the problem in your life. You're the only problem that there is in your world. And, of course, they're the only problem that there is in their world. And what everybody pretty much likes to do is trade places. Uh, You know, I'm going to make you the problem in my life, you make me the problem in your life, and then now we are both unresolvable. And that's because we take that error, my, my false picture, that my trauma is about you, and we call that truth. And by so doing, we fill our minds with that lie, call it truth, and the end result of that is called blockage of truth. And so once one calls their lies truth, truth is not allowed to enter, and uh, one can't even question their beliefs because if they were to question their beliefs, stress would go up to unacceptable levels. And a mind that is so stressed uh, by that internal blockage uh, has a difficult time. Generally speaking, most people in our culture are addicted to managing their stress by getting rid of the source of the information that shows them their tr- the truth. And when truth shows up to one who's in blockage of truth, stress goes up. When stress goes up, the addiction is, I need to get rid of you so that I don't have to look at what's pained inside of me. And it's interesting how people will go through, you know, situation after situation after situation, whether it's a work situation. They'll they'll go through a half a dozen jobs with traumas, with bosses, and then they'll come into a job where their, their, their boss is wonderful and supportive, and they'll still view their boss as the cause of their trauma because they've not resolved those traumas in their so-called, you know, boss file. (laughs) You know, the mind organizes things in files, so to speak, and so one, even with the the most generous and most supportive boss in the world, will find some way to project its unresolved um, energy on that boss. And so it it could be a work situation. It could be with neighbors. If one's, you know, lived with, uh, you know, crazy, abusive neighbors and then moves into a nice neighborhood, 
there's always that suspicion of neighbors. We had a, a call that we called in a couple of days ago. It was a really good show two days ago. And, uh, you know, she was sure that she would never trust anyone ever again. And uh, after being in a very abusive relationship with someone who was considered to be a sociopath, and um, and then all of a sudden, and you might want to listen to that show, it was really a powerful show because all of a sudden it clicked in her brain. Oh, so if I decided I wasn't going to trust anybody again, I would resonate or draw to me untrustworthy people. Duh, how, how shocking. And once I realized that, then if I choose to trust, I get to live a full human life based in the presence of love. And if somebody shows up that isn't trustworthy, I don't hurt because they're not trustworthy. I hurt because there's something in me about trust. And so, you know, in relationship, uh, you know, somebody will go through, uh, you know, relationship after relationship after relationship. They'll go back to dad and how dad was verbally abusive at some point and how uh, a, a marriage was verbally abusive, mom was verbally abusive. Uh, get out of that marriage, a second marriage, a third marriage, or relationship, and then enter into one where there's actual support, and sooner or later, something's going to trigger that old relationship file, and when it comes out, if one isn't willing to be responsible, dissociates from it, then they're going to have to separate from that person who resonates their relationship file. And, of course, It'll always be justified. It'll always be somebody else's fault. But we invite you to notice every time you've done it, you've been there. This healing process is not Dr. Fieldwood. Is there something in your life today that holds some form of hostility or fear? And instead of justifying all of your conclusions, oh, i got to get out of here, are you willing to stop, be responsible, forgive that hostility or fear in your mind, and come back to you in the same space? That's our invitation to you. Michael, we have a caller. Awesome. Let's say hello. Eric code 702, you're on the air. Hello, Michael. Well, hey there, Dr. Androcki. How do you be? I'm fine. Um, I, have awesome. a interesting, I have an interesting story to relate. You know, every day that I try to, uh, to find people that uh, may have issues that can be corrected by using the program, and yesterday was just a perfect example. It was a, a woman who came in for pain medication for um, uh, pain that no doctor could figure out what was going on. So uh, I hope she's listening because uh, she had interest in following the show. And uh, it, it, it started and followed like this. that she, I asked her what was uh, going on. She says, I don't know, but it's going to kill me, which, of course, um, she notified me right from the start, that she has a problem that she thinks is going to consume and envelop her life, which is a, a pretty poor place to, to start the whole interview with. And it uh, proceeded oh. with her, her, uh, her regular provider was not an, an available, so she had to come to me for pain medications. And she had a surgery in her neck, and now she has pain in her mid-back and her low back, and she has no idea what it is, and no doctor has an idea what it is. And if she doesn't take pain medication, she can't get out of bed in the morning. So... She was resistant at first. I said that, you know, a lot of these things are, are deeper inside, and she didn't really, um, with her verbal cues and nonverbal cues, uh, wasn't that interested in looking at that. But over the course of 10 or 15 minutes, I, I proceeded to talk to her. She finally let it out, and she, she would, would cry and uh, would talk about pain and how the pain, uh, there's so many origins of pain. And I says, what does that make you feel when you're experiencing this pain right now? She says, guilt. And I says, guilt about what? She says, my son died from the same medication that I'm taking. He overdosed on narcotics. He said, when I was uh, growing up, my, my, my two uncles were drug dealers. So she had guilt about the, the, the medication that she was taking that was not controlling her pain. She was taking more pain medication. And she would only go in to see the providers, and that's all they could do is to give her more pain medications and not – it, not to provide the introspection for any of the source of why she had pain. So wow. it was uh, it was pretty amazing that just with a few, uh, first of all, uh, establishing the relationship with somebody that you're uh, trying to be helpful and trying to assist them and not to turn them off. Because, of course, when I asked her first, do you have any problems in your life or, or how's your life? She says, I don't have any stress. I don't have any problems. Everything is good. Of course, that's the way it always starts out. And then when you get down to the, the basics, that she has dramatic issues that is uh, obviously affecting 
the, how she's feeling to the point that she feels it's going to to kill her. So just with spending wow. a little bit of time establishing trust, uh, asking a few questions, where does that take you to? And this is it's a, it's a verbal worksheet type of thing. Where does that take you to to find out what the issues are? And she told me, and something I would have never expected, that she was storing inside her. So as with all these people, I, uh, I give them the, all the information for the uh, radio show, uh, all the information for reading the book and for our group that uh, she can attend, and hopefully that she has the opportunity now to realize that it's not up to the doctors to cure her problem. I kept telling her, if you're counting on, on somebody else to fix your problem, you might, be, uh, you might end up being disappointed in the very end. And, uh, and to do the work yourself, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Well, that's an awesome example of, uh, of how it works. And, yes, yeah, most people are just we, – we had an interesting example at, uh, at our intensive uh, back in uh, uh, July, the end of July. There's a woman there who was at Heartland, and for two days she had these excruciating headaches. I mean, she was going around and throwing up, and, and I would ask her, well, you know, this is a this is a detox. You're on track. You're doing the right things. You know, have you ever had headaches before? Oh no, no, I don't. I've never had headaches like this. No. And and finally, as she was throwing up, I, I just casually said to her, "Well, you know, have you ever had migraines?" And all of a sudden, it was like a light bulb went on. She lifted her head with a lighter, you know, lighter eyes than she'd had for two days. Oh, oh, I, I, I forgot I was in a high-stress job for 10 years and had migraines every day, but proclaimed never had headaches in her life. Forgot she had migraines every day for 10 years. And, you know, it's just it's amazing how powerful the denial system can be. Uh, it's just it, it's absolutely amazing. And, and, of course, when that denial system is in operation, uh, look out because, you know, everybody else is going to be at fault. There's, there's that, that readiness to snap at whoever's handy in order to keep stress hidden. Well, I hope that you so um, I really appreciate I that you. And the, I said, I really appreciate you and the work you're doing with people. And there was a young lady that you introduced me to when we were out there and spent some time with her. and she had uh, such excruciating back pain, she was considering surgery. And two weeks later, after really digging in and doing some work, uh, we went to a party and was doing backflips. She shared, was this a woman who was in her 40s? I'm sure that most of your people and most of your listeners have already been um, been exposed to your work and know what it's about. And if there's anybody that uh, hasn't um, heard of it or there's, there's your new listeners, to let them know that uh, there's always something beneath, and the trick is to uh, to find it and to uh, to know what to do about it. And that's why I give them the opportunity to tune into the show and to um, and to read the book and spend time on the on the uh, internet. And they have everything that they need to get started and to realize that they need to take care of their own issues instead of expecting someone else to do it for them. Well, we're certainly fortunate to have this show that we can support people in doing that. It's, a, it's an awesome opportunity, and I appreciate the awesome work that you're doing with people within the medical setting. And, uh, and you, your dedication to take the time to do that because, of course, it's a whole lot easier to take three minutes and write a script than have a 20-minute or 30-minute conversation with somebody to, uh, to open the space for their healing. So you're certainly to be commended and acknowledged. Well, I don't, I, I'd say that I'm, uh, I'm happy to have come across to your work because it's the only thing I can really um, really uh, give anybody who comes uh, looking for help is the ability to do some work and uh, since it's all free, since it's interactive with you, it's, uh, it's my pleasure it's, uh, to, to help people and this is how I truly help people is to give them the option. Now, I'm not sure how many people actually are going to follow through with it but I reach people on a daily basis and at least expose them to it and hopefully You'll hear more on the radio show, and uh, they'll be spending time. By the way, Dr. Tim, this is uh, is Dr. Stephen Androcki, who's from Las Vegas, and you've heard us speak of him before, but you guys haven't, I don't think, met yet. And uh, at some point, maybe you guys will get to meet face to face. Both of you are doing awesome work with the the people you're working with. It's fabulous. 
Well, Dr. Indakri, it's a, a, a wonderful story, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful to hear that there's someone in the medical profession who's doing this work as well. I've been doing the same kind of things and trying to help people see the underlying cause of their physical and emotional pain for a number of years. And as you say, this set of tools that Michael has provided is by far um, the most efficient and powerful that I've come across. So that's why I've I've been running the support group here in Crystal Lake for the past five years, and uh, and it's a real it's a, just such an honor to be around when people get the idea that they can actually make a change in their own lives that will dramatically affect their physical and emotional health. So thank you so much for being uh, uh, one who's spreading this tool and uh, and helping people at a deeper level. It's, I don't have much of a choice. This is what this is what needs to be done. It's the only thing that really works. So, it's uh, if you weren't on the radio, it would make things a lot more difficult, though, Michael. But to have this uh, daily um, um, lesson and uh, an interaction, I think um, it, it really helps. I have a, a girl who's supposed to be coming in shortly who is addicted to heroin, and she wanted to get off of heroin. So I told her her um, her program. So listen to your show every day uh, for the past month, and she should be keeping notes. And um, if she wants me to help her to get off of uh, addiction, then I told her this is the program that she's going to have to do. Or she can go to Narcotics Anonymous, whatever is easier for her. But uh, we'll see if this was successful, that she's keeping notes. And I t- uh, also advised her that she needs to go to the support group in Las Vegas once a week. So. I hope it works. I, I can only put her out there, like you always say, put her out there and, uh, and see what happens. And um, if, if this uh, is working, then um, all, all accolades uh, go to the program and to uh, the availability of the radio show and the support group in Las Vegas. So Claudia and I continue to, to uh, assist people on a regular basis. And thanks for, thanks for having the radio show. And it's uh, always good to tune in and to hear what's going on. Awesome. Well, thanks for the call in, Doc, and uh, we'll look forward to the next time we get face to face. I'm hoping maybe you guys are going to make it to uh, intuitive development, as we discussed earlier. I don't know if that's in the plan for you or Claudia, and if it is, that would be awesome. And otherwise, we certainly are blessed to have the radio show now as a way to reach out. It's always been a deficiency in the work for the last four decades to be able to support people when no support group starts. And you know, as Dr. Tim has done, he's been continuing that support group for six years, and you're now doing out in Pahrump, Nevada, and in Las Vegas. So it's uh, uh, it's certainly wonderful to have the show to be able to, uh, to you know, literally people all over the world can tap in. And, you know, we have people listening every day from from Europe, from Asia, from, you know, just about every corner of the globe. So it's it's certainly a blessing. And we right, actually Michael. had someone... Stephen, we actually had someone come on uh, the other day that had just come to see you. I think his name was Gavin or Garvin or uh-huh. something like that. And uh, so he had some great input, and he was already doing worksheets. So thank you for what you're doing, too. Uh, that was a pleasure to work with him, and he's, uh, I talked to him yesterday. He seems to be doing well. Hopefully he's listening today, and he's got one of the DVDs on communication, so hopefully he'll learn uh, uh, lots about the things he's interested in now. Cool. Yeah, actually he called a couple days in a row. We haven't heard from him since, but it was very enjoyable talking to a young man with his level of intelligence and inquisitiveness and readiness, willingness to do the work. It was pretty pretty wonderful to do. So, I assure you he's still working with the program and and uh, he's still interested. Awesome. 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 Well, give Claudia a hug for us and uh, tell all the folks in the office there we said hello and uh, we'll look forward to the next time we get out to... Uh, to Las Vegas and Pahrump, Nevada. Very good. Okay. All right. Take care. Bless you. Okay. Bye bye. There's no one else on the switchboard waiting or in no comments in the chat room. So back at you. Okay. Well, Dr. Tim, uh, you, get, you get to see the resolution of those kinds of things all the time as well, I'm sure. And, uh, it certainly is awesome to be able to facilitate it for folks, isn't it? Otherwise, it's it's helpless and hopeless. They just see their lives going down the tubes, and it's uh, it's certainly awesome. And uh, the young lady we were speaking about a little earlier when she called this morning was just so excited. And when she 
came uh, the first night. I remember her coming to the workshop uh, the first night, and it was like she was ready to explode. And, and now she's uh, softened and, and smiling, and you know, not, not that her problems are gone, but uh, but she's in, in a comfortable place where she now knows she can work through them. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some work, but just just that simple. And I think the hopefulness of, oh, I can actually do something about this thing that's been going on in my life for over a decade or two decades or three decades. It's, 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 it's such a privilege to give people that kind of hope. Yeah, and it, it's amazing. We had somebody in, in the group last night who was talking about his experience. Uh, he's been coming to the group for several months now, and already he's seeing that he's uncovering patterns in his marriage relationship where he's wanting his wife to change and she's wanting him to change and he's wow. finally <laughs> he's he's finally being able to step back out of that pattern that tug of war and look at it from the perspective of wait a minute I'm creating everything I feel in the marriage and when I get upset about what she's doing it's my upset and she's upset about hers and I can't fix that but further he got to the point where he was specifically talking about this because of the video last night with um, purpose personal power and commitment where you're talking about aligning with building a viable conscious spiritual body and then creating a secondary purpose that lines up your specific talents and skills to help make the world a better place. And he was reporting that in his discussion with his wife, his wife said, well, yeah, you want me to do work on myself, but I want you to do this other practical thing about bringing more money into the family and the bringing more money into the family is the only real thing. This working on yourself and doing your own work, that's kind of a side issue. That's just a, that's like icing on the cake. The real thing is this practical living skills. And he Show was, me the money. Right. He was just floored by how that that video opened him up to the idea that they really are going in very different directions. And and most of us in this culture have been brainwashed to be good commercial consumers and good commercial servants. And the idea that we actually slow down and take the time to build our awareness of ourselves as a spiritual being and strengthen that and divine some purpose for ourselves other than simply making money or collecting toys is unique across the board to, to most of the people in our culture. It's just, it's a very novel idea, and for some it's a ridiculous idea. So oh. to be able to hold the support group and help people open up to that as a possibility and then actually develop those tools within themselves has been very, very rewarding. The other thing is, on a regular basis, when I have people come into the into the office, I have to try and explain to them from the beginning, let's take a look at how the mind-body system actually works. Let's take a look at how emotions are caused and who's causing emotions and who's responsible for emotions. And often that is the uphill battle that ends the therapy because the conditioning from the culture is so strong that people have a hard time even going home and doing the simple work of observing it for themselves. And then sometimes they come back and say, okay, so I I see what you're saying is right, but I don't want to deal with that. I want my other, this other person in my relationship to change. I want my boss to change. I want you to help me change this other person. It reminds me of the time that you were talking to a priest and trying to tell him about the ancient Aramaic. And he said, I don't care what Jesus said. I know the Greek, and that's all I need to know. Well, on a regular basis in therapy, I run into that with people who they 
that they come in and, and they're in a lot of pain, they're very stuck, and I try and show them how the culture has conditioned them to believe they aren't capable of changing their own emotions and that they're responsible for changing other people's emotions, and that's what's keeping them stuck. And they back up and say, okay, well, maybe that's true, but I don't want to deal with that. I want you to fix this other person for me. So no. I have to I hear applaud. You. I have to applaud everybody who does this work, who comes to these groups, who actually applies the tools to themselves. It's I'm in awe. I am humbled by the people with their sometimes very serious life problems and histories of trauma, where they pick up these tools and actually apply to themselves and make their lives better. And it's just an honor to be around when that happens. Yeah, and of course you're you're playing. You know, one of my favorite uh, stories is the story of John the Baptist, and uh, as a therapist, creating that invitation to people, inviting them to look into their own lives. Uh, you're you're basically you're you're becoming the messenger of truth. And when people live in blockage of truth, you become the messenger of truth. That brings up stress, and most people's minds are so stressed that they'll attack and destroy in order to keep their own weaknesses hidden. They all, you know, do any kind of uh, physical, mental, emotional, verbal, you know, um, location of abuse. You know, I'm leaving. I'm not talking about this. Don't make me look here. I don't want anything to do with it. And the inability of a mind to be aware of or manage its own stresses is what produces verbal, physical, and emotional violence and strife. And it's all in a futile effort to suppress the awareness of stress. So somebody takes the geographic cure, they go somewhere where, okay, now, you know, Dr. Hayes isn't in my face showing me what I need to deal with. My relationship isn't in my face showing what am I what I need to deal with, so now I feel better. But, um, yeah, right, for how long? Notice how many times you've been through that <laughs> and how many times, oh. you know. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Jeannie. Jeannie, did you say, were you saying something? Hello, Jeannie. I apologize. I, I hit the button. I didn't mean to. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the functioning purpose of behavior in the mind is not to find or see truth, but to keep stress at acceptable levels. And so many are addicted to managing their stress by using their minds to hide truth from themselves and if people live that way, it's, 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 it becomes the kind of life where you have to walk on eggshells in order not to get a, uh, an attack-type response. And so, you know, the search for truth not being a job assigned to the mind, that the mind is designed to keep stress at acceptable levels, you, you become the target. You become the one who starts to bring up that stress. And, and as someone builds a personal code that they uh, strive to love truth rather than their own opinions, then they're willing to endure that stress that comes up and keep their minds in check and keep their defenses and their attacks and their, you know, their pseudo-solutions, their leaving, et cetera. They keep that in check and start to move in the direction of truth, which means they get to look back through everything they have stored in them of of hostility, fear, rage. It's amazing how many people go into a relationship carrying a whole bag of drama, trauma, rage, pain, you know, beatings, abuse, rape, uh, on and on and on goes the list, and they go into a new relationship carrying that bag of garbage, and they hope to have a wonderful relationship, and when they don't, they blame their partner. And... If we could just love truth enough to allow those things to surface, to to come forward, you know, as Dr. Andraki was just sharing about uh, about his patient out in um, in Las Vegas, you know, gee, here's this lady who, you know, everything in my life is wonderful, and once some probing happens, you can bet her stress level went up immeasurably when she starts looking at what Dr. Andraki just shared, you know, a, a patient who's uh, got a brother who's been a drug dealer and a son who died from the same drugs that she's asking him to prescribe. I mean, talk about an internalized trauma. And 
for people to be brave enough to shift the personal code to be able to deal with that, I mean, that's so monumental. And uh, certainly uh, with with the work we did up in Cary last week, Dr. Tim, the uh, the work you've been doing with that group and the folks in that area, uh, the, the fruit of that is just awesome to watch how willing those people were each night to confront another piece of their own puzzle. Just fabulous. Yes, it was truly... Uh a blessing to be surrounded by so many people who were loving and supportive of each other and brave enough to look at their own their own issues so yeah there's a there's a a cool video on the website and and it speaks of the power you know there's an african proverb the uh, the wisdom that came out of africa with this proverb of if you want to go quickly go alone if you want to go far go together and and particularly in terms of doing one's inner work that if you are in a field of people who are uh, willing to do their work, you enhance your ability to move forward by reliance on the support of that literal energy field. It shifts, it changes things immeasurably. It changes your thoughts, it changes your feelings. And when you do touch into those stresses, just being in a field of willingness, I mean, we had, what, an average of about 40 people all week being in a field of willingness of 40 people who are are, are going to move forward in their world uh, is so awesome, uh, a blessing to have. You know, and, and to see the power of that, there's a really cool video. One of the things Jeannie has put on the website is a, a link that says, We Are One. And if you click on that, you'll see a, uh, a video link there to a story about a lion that was raised in uh, uh, an apartment in, I believe it was London, England. These two young men had this pet lion, and, of course, it got big enough that they ended up having to take it to uh, Africa and let it go in a game preserve. And they come back a year later, and they're out there calling for this lion, and this huge male lion comes bounding down the hill, jumps up all over them, hugging them, licking, kissing on them. I mean, it, it's really powerful to watch, but the female lioness that he'd mated with, which is a wild lion, walks up to these men, and instead of attacking, they're able to pet her, which is, I mean, that's impossible, this wild lioness. However, and to me it's a a demonstration of the energy impact that one of us has upon another, and, you know, I'm sure that... uh, that uh, this lion did not have a, a conversation with its mate before they went bounding down the hill, uh, telling her how these were his friends don't eat them, but um, she's there with them and and they're able to actually touch her and pet her, uh, and that's the power of being in an energy field of safety, of love and support. So I uh, I truly acknowledge you for all the work you've done with those folks to uh, to create that level of support and. And a field that is expanding out. You know, you watch how it's popping around the city. I thought it was really awesome that uh, the Ruha Center, where we're going to be next week, was doing a live video last week, unbeknownst to us. Uh, last Saturday, as we're doing one of the workshops, they were uh, doing the same at that center. And uh, now we've got uh, the uh, Center for Conscious Evolution or Spiritual Evolution that's starting a support group. Uh, there are folks in um, in the downtown part of the city that are talking about uh, starting a support group. So there's there's lots of awesome stuff happening. And you met uh, two different people last week that are thinking of starting up support groups in uh, the south side of Chicago and the north side of Chicago. So hopefully your uh, your visit and they're having some continued exposure to the work is going to facilitate those two locations opening up groups too. Yes, absolutely. That's certainly the space we're holding, and I presume that they'll probably be joining us for some of the workshops here in um, in um, Naperville as well to uh, enhance their understanding of the work and their ability to create that support. So very, very cool, very powerful. So is there any uh, uh, particular uh, major issue uh Tim, that uh, that came up in the uh, support group last night that uh, the group was uh, was working on. Well, I think the uh, 
there wasn't an individual specific issue. The biggest one was, we were, as we were just talking about, the idea that the culture does not guide us to or support us in developing a viable conscious spiritual body. And I'm reminded of one of my favorite lines from the book Tuesdays with Maury. And Maury said, you know, if you live in a culture that doesn't make you feel good about yourself, you need to build your own culture. That's for sure. And so, you know, who, someone in the group had a, as a teacher, was feeling rather attacked because in the lecture you talk about what happens in the schools and how children are not allowed to have recess and they're not allowed to have plenty of blank staring time and things like that. So there was some defensiveness about whether or not um, people were attacking teachers. And uh, we generally suggested that anybody who had upset like that could do a worksheet on it, but we also talked about how it's not so much an attack on teachers as it is understanding that the greed and the politics and the governmental agencies really are squeezing the institutions to produce good commercial consumers. They're not necessarily trying to create independent thinkers and individuals who have a, a strong sense of their spiritual center as well as intellectual skills. They are simply trying to move people through uh, the machine so that they come out on the other end relatively docile and good consumers. And there were a lot of different stories in the support group last night about people who have had difficulty with that. And then we spent the rest of the time Several people had some very powerful testimonials, including um, one woman who talked about the value of doing this work without expecting anybody else to change. And she's been in the group now for over a year, doing lots and lots of worksheets on herself. And one of her biggest sorrows was about her ex-husband. And she'd come to realize through a lot of the different work that she's done that when she lost her ex-husband, she lost her best friend. So she had done a whole series of worksheets around it, and she'd been to the workshops during the week and done even more work, and then just happened to reach out to her husband and let her know that you were in town, her ex-husband. And he decided to come in, see one of your workshops she didn't pressure him she wasn't strong arming him and and she was this was her her testimonial was that she was just so amazed that without talking to him or pressuring him or trying to make him do any worksheets on himself with her just doing all the worksheets on herself and about her sadness and her pain at losing him as a friend all these years later, now all of a sudden, he's back in her life as a friend and offering to help her with things and actually came to your workshop the night before last in Naperville. So he got introduced to the work and he's reconnected with her as a friend and that was the first testimonial. And then there was another testimonial about a woman who used these tools exclusively to help her get through a very traumatic time when her first granddaughter at two months old was taken away from the family because a doctor misdiagnosed eczema as bruising. And the Department of Children and Family Services had to investigate to make sure that the child wasn't being the infant two months old, wasn't being abused. And the nightmare that that caused for three or four weeks and the distress of the grandparents who were not only deprived of seeing their granddaughter but were being accused of either abusing or supporting the abuse of their granddaughter. 
So her consistent application of these tools and using other members of the group for support got her through that in a way that she never would have imagined possible without that support. So we spent the last part of the group last night with several powerful testimonials, and uh, most of them focused on the need for us to be continuing and to be vigilant at doing our individual work to clean up anything within ourselves that's less than love. So that's how we spent the group last night. Are you there, sir? I think we might have lost Michael. Excuse me. Excuse me. I had my uh, my mute button on while I was listening to you. Uh, perhaps the uh, person who who thought we were insulting teachers um, uh, might want to listen to the show. And let me share a uh, a letter. And this is re as opposed to uh, being any critique of teachers because teachers are having less and less choice all the time. I know that uh, Julie Haverstick, who worked in the uh, uh, inner city school system in Dayton, Ohio, one of the reasons she retired when she did was because the control that was coming in to the schools uh, taking over what they were allowed to present. But if we go back to uh, early in the 19th century, there's a, a foundation that was created called the uh, General Education Board. It was set up by an initial donation by uh, Mr. Uh, Rockefeller Sr. And uh, here's a quote. There was a minister named Gates who was the first president of that general education board. And as it got started, he wrote a letter to Mr. Rockefeller. And this is a quote directly from his letter. In our dreams, we have limitless resources, and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hands. The present education conventions fade from their minds, and unhampered by tradition, we work our own good will upon a grateful and responsive rural folk. We shall not try to make of these people or any of their children philosophers or men of learning or men of science. We have not to raise up from among them authors, editors, poets, or men of letters. We shall not search for embryo great artists, painters, musicians, nor lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statesmen of whom we have ample supply. The task we set before ourselves is very simple, as well as a very beautiful one. To train these people as we find them to a perfectly ideal life, just where they are. So we will organize our children and teach them to do in a perfect way the things their fathers and mothers are doing in an imperfect way, in the homes, in the shops, and on the farm. That set the, the philosophy for education. The general education board back, I forget exactly the date, 1902, something like that. And that's the first letter from the director of the board to Mr. Rockefeller. We're going to work our, uh, our own uh, will upon these rural folk. And that's called education in America. There's, there's a fellow who, uh, who wrote a book called Dumbing Us Down, and this guy was Teacher of the Year two, two, two years in a row in New York State. And he, if, it's been a while since I've read his material, but he basically said that the 12 years of, of public education that's given, that I believe, if I remember correctly, it was like three or four years. Everything that was learned in that 12 years could be learned in three to four years. The rest of the time was spent basically dumbing us down. And that's not the teacher's fault. I mean, that the teacher doesn't stand up and say, no, I'm going to actually educate instead of follow your program. But, of course, they've been so-called educated, and actually it's not education at all. It's indoctrination. The word educate comes from the root educari, which means to draw out. It does not mean to put in. So most of those who are supposedly educating our children have been indoctrinated by this type of thinking. And, you know, it's just time for us to get out of the insanity. Time for us to wake up. And, yes, I think that teachers need to wake up and be responsible for what they're doing with children. And that means that they're going to have to do some work to get out of the literal brainwash that's happened to them. 
And uh, so the reflection is on the philosophy behind it and the insanity behind that type of thinking. Yeah, it's a very powerful powerful system that is going to take quite a bit to, to overcome. Definitely. Well, and it's, it's going to happen one person at a time. One person at a time who deals with the stresses. You know, one of the, one of the games of, of those who would control others is keep people under stress. You know, uh, the lady that, uh, that we were just talking about whose brother's a drug dealer, you know, don't give her any tools to deal with her stress. You know, keep, keep people under that pain and trauma, and what happens? They become controllable. They make great slaves. And it's time for us to give up the game of slavery in this, in this country. It's time for us to give up the game of slavery on this planet. And for each person to realize they have a connection to source. And I don't care if it's, you know, somebody like Mr. Gates who wrote this letter, who was the first director of the General Education Board, or whether it's Mr. Rockefeller who funded it, started it, promoted the idea. Each of these people, each of us has a connection to source. We don't have to be taking from someone else in order to have stuff and money and wealth and things. And that's when we're going to uh, uh, start to create a world where we have uh, humans who live human lives, who live as the active presence of love. And with that active presence of love, we bring each other support in search of truth, in search of aliveness. And in so doing, human life shows up on every corner of the planet. We're here for the restoration of human life. And we're here, each person that's listening, to do their part in creating the best year of our eternal lives, that is all of us on planet Earth. We hold you in the blessing. Bring somebody to the show with you tomorrow. Look forward to talking to you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife, Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Earth Angels Radio. For more on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www whyagain.com that's www.whyagain.com continuously